Do you prioritize sleep in your life or not? And if not, why should you? And what are the substantial benefits that go beyond just feeling better when you've had a great night's sleep and maybe more energy? It, it goes much deeper than that. And I wanted to specifically talk about the various systems of the body that are affected. I have a strong interest in gut health and preventing inflammation because we focus a lot on hiatal hernia syndrome on this channel. So your microbiome, if you're not familiar with that terminology, is um, encompasses a vast number, 60 to 100 trillion organisms in your colon that uh, perform a lot of different activities, protecting your brain, protecting your immune system, and so much more. And what does that have to do with sleep? So uh, there was a 2019 study that found that irregular sleep patterns, so this is um, more than a 90 minute difference between uh, when, you, when you go to sleep. So some, one night you go to sleep at 10 and the next night you go to sleep at midnight. So that's, you know, two hours, more than 90 minutes. Um, so irregular patterns can really lead to changes in the types of bacteria in your microbiome, uh, actually leading to more of the bad guys. So negative bacteria in your microbiome that in turn then create inflammation and also lower diversity. So uh, microbiome health, gut health, and we can sort of say in the same breath um, immune system health because 70% of your immune system is housed in your gut. So that diversity has a lot to do with uh, inflammation, it has a lot to do with immune health, and so a lowered diversity, which is quite common here in the United States because we don't eat enough good, diverse food to create a nice um, abundance of different bacteria, let alone healthy bacteria. Uh, so, so yes, there's a diet component for sure, but there's a sleep component. And again, if your sleep patterns are not consistent, that can really offset the gut. Now, a healthy gut also makes what's called short chain fatty acids and those have a lot to do with overall gut health and uh, when your sleep quality so we were talking about regularity before but when your sleep quality is low you're making less of those short chain fatty acids which is problematic your microbiome also makes neurotransmitters so this has a lot to do with the gut brain connection that you may have heard of. That's a very intimate connection between your gut and your brain. And the microbiome makes neurotransmitters like serotonin, melatonin, GABA. So these all have to do with, with sleep benefit. And so if your microbiome again is unhealthy and you're not making enough of these good neurotransmitters, it's gonna affect your sleep. So it's kind of a, a roundabout uh, issue because poor sleep affects the gut, poor gut affects the sleep. So <laughs> you, you, you've got to handle both to really get the, the, the major benefits. I also wanted to touch upon other systems affected with poor sleep. Uh, one is your cardiovascular system. So. Uh, not having good sleep can actually damage uh, the blood vessels, which increase your risk of not only heart disease, but stroke. And since those are the number one killers in this country, again, prioritizing sleep and sleep quality is very, very important. Brain health. So we've been talking about the gut-brain connection, uh, but poor quality leads to actually increased brain aging, increased risk of dementia, increased risk of heart disease and stroke, which I just mentioned, but also you get disruptions in what's called the brain's waste removal system. So the gut has this waste removal system and your brain has a waste removal system. So if your sleep quality is poor, you're not removing waste as well, which makes sense that then we could lead to dementia, 
mood swings, depression, etc. And, and that is what is seen. Um, basically, staying up late negatively impacts your mental health and then your increased risk of mental uh, and behavioral disorders. So that was another aspect. Also, you're, you get an increased risk of insulin resistance, which puts you at risk for diabetes, but also heart disease, dementia, obesity, fatty liver, PCOS. So there's a lot of diseases that we're trying to avoid that, that are associated with insulin resistance. So there's a lot to be said for really figuring out, really figuring out your sleep. Now, if you're a night owl, I understand it, it can be a little tougher. Uh, the research definitely showed that night owls are, are more likely to uh, have uh, mental disturbances, behavioral disturbances, even, even if they're inherently night owls. Uh, one study recently out of Stanford from 2024, so just last year, uh, showed that even the night owls need to sort of lights out at 1 a.m., which for me, I'm, I'm a 10, 10 p.m., so 1 a.m. sounds really late, but, but that's what this one study showed, is that you don't want to push it beyond 1 a.m. And, um, but there's other studies that have to do with the circadian rhythm of when the sun is rising and, and setting and the closer you go along with that, the better. Certainly they found that the, the morning larks, as they're called, who like to get up with the sun and, and then go to bed early have um, lower risk of mental disturbance, behavioral disorders, etc. So what you want to do is try to tweak your your normal rhythm if you tend to be a night owl just try to start pushing it by half an hour and get yourself to accommodate to an earlier um, bedtime if you're somebody who regularly stays up to 2 and 4 a.m uh, you, you tr try to start pushing that back to to get to bed earlier and and just slowly wean yourself in that direction to improve health quality and, and all of these other facets that we just talked about. And as far as diet is concerned, you want to make sure that you don't eat a huge dinner. You have a good three hours after eating before you lie down to go to bed. It's great if after eating dinner, you could take a light stroll. This is not a jog, but it's a light stroll. Uh, 20, 30 minutes is, is really all you need, but to get some motion to help your food digest is very, very important. Anything you can do to, to cut out the, the, the blue light, which is very stimulating. You can, get, you can get glasses that cut that out. You can just start dimming your lights uh, once, once you've eaten dinner to kind of get you into that more rest mode. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, tips and and, and things you can use. Uh, I do like melatonin. I find it to be very beneficial uh, an hour before bed. So there's a lot of different things you can try, but it, it's more that prioritization of sleep. Also, you can get uh, various metrics. I have, a, I have a whoop, there you go, whoop band that I use that sort of gauges, tells me a lot about my sleep, how much REM, how much deep, how much awake, etc. And that's very helpful so you can start to see a cause and effect relationship between your bedtime and your quality of sleep. So there's a lot of things. Apple watches do the same thing. Um, Aura rings do that. So you can sort of play with it and, and see what suits your lifestyle the best. But what I wanted to really focus on is that this prioritization of sleep and what is the, what is the sweet spot it's seven to nine hours, and a, a lot of research has been stressing the fact that, you know, if it's eight hours, it's eight hours of sleep. And unfortunately, that means probably eight and a half hours in bed because we're, we're awake for part of the night. You want to keep optimally, if you're at half an hour or less awake, that's great. Some people are awake a lot longer, so you want to play with that. But 
it's worth it. Now, I understand if you have the viewpoint of like, sleep, <laughs> I don't wanna sleep, it's a waste of time. I completely understand. Uh, I used to, used to feel that way. I used to joke that if I just had a battery pack that I could exchange, I'd be a happy girl. But um, that's, that's not realistic and it's not, it's not what's gonna give you the longevity and ideal health that you need across all of these systems your brain, your heart, your gut, etc. So very worthwhile to make this a priority and I hope some of these tips helped you. Let me know. Uh, subscribe to the channel please if you like this content so more people can see it. Give it a thumbs up if you like it and uh, I'm always open for questions. I actually try to answer every question that comes in so uh, feel free to send them in and um, if you need help in this area we're happy to help you.